Well, YouTube, and welcome back for part three of our introduction to Frels. We'll now focus on creating the stars effect, which is arguably the most important ingredient of the old project. And we'll also spend some time to work on the post-processing effects of the scene. But without further ado, let's get going. I'm importing a new stars.spell component, and since we're here, let's remove the grid. It served as well, but it's not needed anymore. And at this point, stars that's felt is a super simple static mesh. At the beginning of the component, use texture will give us a promise that returns a texture, and Svelte conveniently gives us an away block that resolves the promise and injects our new mesh into the scene graph only when the texture is loaded under the name value. Dmesh is a simple plane which we are stretching in the x axis to make it look like a wide line, and we're setting a ba basic material that is also transparent. The transparency is given by this texture, star the PNG, which I'm also going to link in the description of the video. And here's our star. However, seen like this, it definitely loses most of its form of glory. We'll see later during the video that the movement logic and the post-processing effects will truly bring it to life, but in the meantime, we should focus on creating a lot more of these lines and spawn them all around the scene. First things first, we need to define how many stars we want to generate, then an helper function that gives us random values in a specific range. For example, calling the function with these two parameters will generate a random number between minus 15 and plus 15. Then for each star, we're going to generate this object. And for now, we'll just focus on setting the position and length of the star. And once we have the object, we're going to pass it through a reset star function that will reset the state of the star. We'll set the position as a vector free that has random values in the x axis between minus 15 and plus 15. Same for the z axis, we'll choose slightly different values for the y axis. And this property will set the length of the line. It will also be a random number between 1.5 and 15 and then we'll return the updated star once we finish. There are now two ways to add our stars to the scene, and I'll first show you the simple, however really inefficient way of doing it, and then a better method. We could simply iterate over the stars array, set the position as the position of the star object, and scale the mesh along the x-axis by using the length property. However, this simple implementation will require a separate draw call for each mesh. In short, the GPU will have to communicate back and forth with the CPU to prepare each mesh before it's rendered. And this type of communication is really inefficient, especially when we have hundreds of meshes to render all at once. Since we're always drawing the same mesh, but with different scale and position values, we can simply send all of the meshes in the GPU memory all at once with a single command by using instance meshes. This component is part of Frel's extras, and to use it, we have to specify how many meshes we want to instantiate, and for each one, we need to create an instance. This instance component will hold both the position and scale values that we are specifying in each star object. And that's how we can spawn hundreds of these meshes without affecting the performance of our scene. And this is starting to look better, however, we're missing a touch of color. And it's easy to fix that, I'm creating a new array that holds some colors, and at the end of the reset function, I'm selecting a random one from the array here, and I'm assigning it to the color prop of the star object. Now, pretend that this line doesn't exist. It changes the color space and just think of it as something that gives us a slightly different color curve. And to improve the brightness of the color, at the end of the function, I'm multiplying its values by 1.3. And finally, we can apply it to each instance by setting the color prop. This is starting to look much better, however, we're still missing the most important piece of the puzzle, the animation of the stars. So let's fix that next. Each star will have a random speed value between 20 and 42, and then another use frame callback will be used to handle the logic of the animation. For each star, we'll just add to the x position the speed of the star times delta, which is a variable that returns how much time has passed since we rendered the last frame, and if the x position of the star is greater than 40, we'll simply reset the object. To trigger a reactive state change, we'll reassign the star's object to itself. And that's it. Or is it? If you look really carefully, you'll notice that sometimes the animation looks a bit off. Some lines are appearing out of nowhere at the center of the screen, and that's definitely not the expected behavior. Let me zoom out a little to show the issue. The reset function is setting the position of the line roughly here in this circle. 
but what we need instead is to reset the vector slightly more to the left. This way, the stars will spawn outside of the visible portion of the screen and the animation will appear seamless. These updated values are enough to fix the issue, so feel free to use this solution as is. However, after a bit of trial and error, I ended up preferring this approach instead. Most of these stars that are spawned with these values won't appear close to the spaceship, and that's perfect for the stars that are moving in the background, but I also wanted to randomly select a portion of the meshes, and in this case it's roughly 20%, and let them spawn very close to the spaceship to populate a little more that region of the scene. And this is how I got to this selection logic. And that's all there is to the star animation. Now we'll seamlessly spawn new lines of screen and reset their position once they get out of view. For some reason though, if you compare this scene to the intro of the video, it lacks some visual punch. And this is where the post-processing effects will help us to finalize the look of our project. So let's set up an effect composer with a bloom pass, which should add a nice glow to the highlights of the scene. This is a post-processing add-on, which we have to initialize by passing in the size of the canvas. I'm assuming here that we're never going to resize the window, but on a more refined version of this project, you would have to call this function again anytime the, windows, the window is resized. The main idea behind the effects composer class is that we can chain a series of effects together by adding pass objects to the composer. This first pass will simply render the scene, and the second one will use the result of the previous pass to add a bloom effect on top of it. Finally, an output pass is used to show the result on screen. I'm then calling this function inside on mount, and now we're ready to use the composer. Like React Tree Fiber, Pharrell tries to automatically render the scene for you without giving control on how the rendering step is processed. When using an effects composer, we have to take control of the rendering step because we want to make sure that the output of the composer is the final image that will be presented on screen. This is where use render will come in handy. Like use frame, it will run on every frame, but it will also signal to Freld that we're going to take control of the render loop, and here's where we should tell the composer that we are ready to finally render our scene. And look at that, there's a large difference in visuals in my opinion, because when used correctly, the bloom pass can really enhance the experience. Now let's implement one last feature before we can wrap this project. It would be amazing if we could reflect all of these stars into the spaceship, so let's focus on that next. Here's the plan. We're going to render the scene without the spaceship, use that render as an environment map, and then we will re-render the scene, this time with the spaceship, and also attach this new environment map to the ship's material. We first need a ref to the spaceship, which we can easily get by binding ref to this variable. And the easiest way to create an environment map from an existing scene is to use the PM rem generator class from FreeJS. Each time we create a new one, we'll also save a reference to it in this variable. And here's the updated rendering logic to create our reflections. We'll start by deleting the previous environment map if it exists, then we'll hide the spaceship, create the environment map from an existing scene, and re-enable the spaceship again. I'm also adding a new background to the scene, which I don't want to render when we're creating the environment map since it will wash out most of our reflections. So I'm disabling it immediately before using PM RAM. Then I'm iterating through all the meshes inside the spaceship model and assigning the environment map and also increasing a little bit the intensity. Since the original normal map of the model is a bit too strong, I'm also lowering the strength of the normals. I feel honestly this is the part that really completes the project. But I would be wrong, we're still missing the beam of light at the end of the spaceship. So let's hop back inside spaceship.svelte and grab the energy beam texture. And once it's ready to be used, we'll slap it into a cylinder geometry with a transparent yellowish material. And that's it folks, we finally reached the finish line. I hope you had fun with this little introduction to Freld. I'm definitely in love with it. And Svelte in general is a wonderful framework that I can easily recommend to everyone. If you have feedbacks or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And yeah, I hope to see you again on our next adventure. Cheers!